Thank you for tuning in to part two of our chat with Werner Jansen of Purpose Advisory. To recap episode one, we covered how Werner in his business chooses to wear one hat as opposed to having one person in his business wearing three hats. We also covered things like how Werner plays a facilitation role for his clients as they more than likely have a lot of the answers. We spoke about how linking values to goals drives motivation for his clients to take action. We also spoke about how he assesses the effectiveness of the strategies aligned to values when he gets into his annual review process. And lastly, we covered how it's not always about creating wealth and creating more money. It's about creating more out of life. You're about to listen to part two, uh, where we talk about things like the investment conversation, how Werner plays an accountability partner for his clients, and how we've conditioned clients as an, as an industry to care more about investments. So please, without any further ado, here's part two of our chat with Werner Jansen. So you, you, you briefly touched on it earlier, so let's lean into it now, the investment preferences conversation. Because to your point, you, you still don't shy away from that. Investments are still a very important vehicle in implementing the strategy. So talk us through that. So talk us through um, how you have that investment conversation, uh, how you tie it back to the values and goals, um, you know, how you maybe facilitate it because you, you, you're really passionate about this facilitatory role. Like what, what, how does that work for you? Yeah, so very often when we start... Um, you know, talking about values and, you know, getting the cards up on these days is the digital screen, right? I, sure. I miss those days when I had the deck of cards. Where's my deck of cards? <laughs> I have it. I have it here. I have it. <laughs> I have it here. I have it here. But very, very often, you know, these days I'm not doing the deck of cards. I'm doing the digital deck of cards and we chuck those cards onto the screen, obviously. And now we go, right, where's your five? Let's start. Um, very, very often, the card that gets picked as well, even if it's not a, even if it doesn't make the cut with the top five, because you know, often there's like, oh, between this and this fifth one, you know, um, master new skills and knowledge comes up so often. I have to say that probably percentage wise, um, because I'm fortunate enough, I guess, to work with ambitious people. I'm just lucky because people start with like-minded people refer to us um, and those those people are normally people that's got a growth mindset and that's hungry to learn so very often that comes up as a card is master new skills and and, and increase their knowledge and when, when you have that as a card as a value card and that's important to somebody um, and, and you start having the conversation you start getting to strategy right what are the vehicles that's going to support this you know uh, wealth creation that links up to the to, to the goals very often um, when, when you have the chance to speak about investments, you have the chance now to, um, to basically allow that individual to experience that card in what normally has been a very boring session, maybe, or a, a telling session, a session of, I'll, sh I'll, I'll tell you what to do with your investments. I think I know what's best because I think a lot of advisors, um, could still potentially um, with the best interest, you know, with client best interest at their heart, but sort of decide for them where it, this is the ideal, this is, start, this is the start of the process for the client to upskill in their financial arena. This is them becoming more informed in terms of how investments work. So when we enter that conversation, it's normally, it's a strategy session where we talk all things investments, right? And it's obviously driven through the Lumion platform when you've got, we've got the videos to watch, what's active, what's passive, you know, what's a managed fund, how, how can we do this? Um, you, before you have the client do that session, you basically tell them, look, this is something that's important to you, the card, skills and knowledge, learning the skill, we are gonna teach you about the world of investing. Maybe up until this point, you've been a passenger and you've been outsourcing that area of your life to, to a professional. We want you to, to upskill. We want you to understand. We want you to increase your knowledge in this area, in this arena as well. And they're very open to it. They're very open to it because you've just, you've just linked it to, hey, you said this was important, learn new skills. Hey, we're gonna, now we're gonna start teaching you new skills and knowledge when it comes to your own financial planning and how your money could be invested. So they're very, very open to it. So I've been fortunate that most of the clients do pick those cards 
uh, and then that gives me the opportunity to say, hey, this is important to you, right? So we've got these goals that you've listed um, in this area. You want to learn Spanish or you want to, you know, learn how to, you know, what, what, whatever it is, whatever that skill or, or knowledge set is. But it's very easy for me then to link it to, hey, now I want to teach you um, from a financial point of view um, how your investments could be managed. I want you to understand how this is going to work. I want you to not just be a passive participant. I want you to be an active participant in terms of when we upskill you, give us your thinking in terms of what do you think you prefer. And that leads to just greater, I mean, that's just a, a, a massive benefit for a financial planner and educated, a client willing to educate on the financial matters. It is actually a really good outcome because an informed client and an educated client, it's just a, it's a, it's a better client when, when, when things become difficult later down the line, when there's, when things become diff difficult later, sorry, that Siri bu bugging me and she wants to make her podcast debut. I'm going to put <laughs> um, when things become difficult down the line, maybe there's, there's a recession or what have you, you've done your bit and you've educated. It's a better client that's uh, more resilient to go through that sometimes very emotionally draining or anxious, you know, angst-inducing um, state. So, yeah, we, we put a very high premium on clients um, education normally without them even picking those cards but um we do have a we have an obligation but um yeah and clients love it clients engage clients want to most clients want to learn they just find it super intimidating that's all they find it super intimidating if it's not being explained well they find it super intimidating if you talk like a you know robot and you talk above their heads they find it super um that 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 doesn't give them comfort but but if you can if you can communicate in a clear fashion and you can explain and educate in a clear fashion and make it easy to understand clients actually love it they want to clients want to learn they want to upskill so we've linked um the strategy sessions with the with the uh, investment piece of education just link it back to the cards link it back to the cards link it back to the value i like it i like it and so Okay, so we've spoken about, you know, how you bring values to life, how you then link that through to an investment education conversation. I want to now take you towards the end of the advice process now, right? You've, you've delivered advice um, and you've given them great impactful advice around, in this client's instance, um, uh, helping them get into a North Shore house, helping them get into a surf club, uh, doing all those great things that are really important to them. But you know, some might argue that they're non-financial goals, right? And non-financial goals like getting you into a surf club is really hard to keep people on track, right? And and I'm an advisor, so how do I how do I make sure that they you know actually go and do a a surf uh, a surf class or get into a surf club? And is that even my role? I, you know, how how would you respond to that? Like, how do you go about that? Yeah. Look, we need to realize that to a large degree, we play, we can. We can choose to play accountability partner to the, to the client. You can choose how much of an impact you want to have in the client's life when it comes to non-financial non goals. You can choose. That's your choice. If you feel that you're going to leave it in the client's court, um, you're going to help them uncover the goal, you're going to help them... Um, uh, commit to certain actions, like let's say in this client's case, the, the surf club, um, you can choose two avenues. The one avenue is that you don't play accountability partner. That's one avenue where you, you, you believe it's, it's not your role. You might touch on it later at review stage. You might ask them, hey, how did that go? Um, that, that's your choice. I just believe we sit with this in this powerful position, this awesome position, with this information, you know, that's, 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 that's so important to the client that why not make use of it to increase our value add to the client? Like, why not use that? Why not quickly pop into my calendar, systemize it? I have my operations person pop that, sort of go through the, you know, go through the timelines of those goals. And, and you know, in my calendar, pop up a very quick like reminder, check in with person X around the, uh, that he joined the surf. How easy is that on my side to systemize it? And how fun is it for me 
to make that phone call or send that text and have this client know that I'm part of this, pro I'm going to, I'm part of this, pro I'm going to make them do this. I'm actually going to make them do this because then that relationship just goes to another level. It's, I'm not sure we can just call you, you're not a financial at that stage. Yes, you are a financial planner. Yes, you are. But you've taken on a different role in the client's life. And it's not time consuming. It's not time consuming at all to have these little nudges, as we call them, little nudges, because I mean, we already talk to clients quite often, right? But now we just add this different, you know, dimension to it where you're like, hey, you know, I wanted to check in quickly. Now, how did that go? And you would be amazed by the, the client's responses. And then I think once that happens, where you've systemized that and you're actually nudging clients on it, it's just, you've just elevated to a, you've elevated trust. Um, you've elevated trust. You've ever elevated, elevated human connection. You've elevated um, best interest. You've elevated just, everything you've elevated how you basically work with this with this person and it's a game changer it's a game changer so my my view is if you have the ability to you've got this rich information what this client's trying to do yeah fine it's non-financial who cares we have a lot of non-financial conversations already with clients good advisors already without even having a values-based approach they already have really good, deep conversations with clients, but this is just a way to systemize it and sort of shine a light on it. That's all. You, everybody already does it. Good advisors don't always just talk strategy, money. They always talk about, hey, how's, how's the dog? Your dog had that operation. Good advisors do, human beings do this, right? But this is just a way to systemize it and sort of um, play a more pivotal role when it comes to those non-financials. And I think it's awesome. And it's injected a lot of um, energy into my um, engagements with clients. It's just made it so much more fun, man. It's made my role more, like I feel I'm living with more purpose because I'm really like, you know, it's not just lip service. Like I am really helping clients living better lives. And it's, it's just so cool. It's just so cool to be able to be that person that can help a client in you know all these areas of life and i'm just nudging again i'm not the solution i'm not the person that oh you know you you know oh this didn't work you now now do this I'm not that i'm not a life coach still i'm not a life coach but there's certain elements of what what we do that that does um you know lead lead it just leads clients to better outcomes this accountability partner thing and i have one in my life as well it works for me as well accountability partners it just works and it's it's not a lot of effort. Um, yeah, it's just, it's pretty cool, man. I, I like that. There, there was a point that you made that I, I'd be interested in your opinion on around you have these conversations already, but through Lumiant, you've systemized it, right? Because I, I know that systemizing plays a huge role in the client experience. And, and when, when we're talking about, you know, a values-based experience, some of the people that we would talk to and, and you know, some of the, some of the advisors that aren't quite there yet, and that's okay, would, would say things like, you know, my clients wouldn't like that. They wouldn't want to do that. Um, is that a feeling that you've had before? And, and how does the system play a role in that? Talk, talk us through that. Yeah. Um, I think for advisors being um, sort of wary or skeptical around uh, if these conversations will, if their clients first want to talk about it and if it's going to add value, um, we need to realize that uh, we condition clients to what we should talk about. So clients take our lead. If we talk about return and markets the whole time, then a client's been conditioned to talk about that. So they sort of, the best they could do then is, uh, okay, well, I guess I need to ask you about the market and how my investment portfolio is going because that's always how the conversations are going. We have the opportunity to condition clients. So if we shift that a little bit and we mention to a client that, hey, the, the, the money part, that's, that's still super important and we're still going to make sure that we do that in our, in our, in our best ability. But we just want to 
we just want to shine the light a bit more on the richness of your life and, and how is all this working out for you are we really getting you to be, to better outcomes um, and we want to start more talking about your values clients will follow clients follow clients will take suit clients are what you talk about and what you believe will add the most the most value in a client's life clients will follow suit think about a new client walking into a financial advisor's office or in this case jumping on a zoom they don't know they just don't know what should be talked about they think it's only investment but they actually don't know the role of a financial planner and you have this opportunity to condition clients that a lot of the conversation is going to happen around your life and your values and is this working for you and is this driving your you know are we getting you to a place where you can say that you're doing better in all the areas of your life who which client wouldn't want to have that conversation with somebody think about yourself and your own life like if i were to walk if i were to put my client hat on i'm going to walk in somebody's office and one office i'm only going to have conversations about money and returns and strategies and another office i'm going to have conversations about my life and what's important to me and we will get to the money element which one am i going to choose well i know which one i'm going to choose because i want to, i'm going to choose the one where we can talk about my, my 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 life as well we shouldn't choose for clients i've had i've had engineers like super like right left brain analytical super duper Super duper, where I thought, oh gosh, I wonder how this is going to pan out. Man, in some of the best meetings, don't think that the analytical analytical people don't want to talk about their lives and what's going to what's what's going to drive um, better outcomes. Um, don't don't make the choice for the client. Don't say my clients only only say that when you've taken them through that, and the client said no, I don't want to do that. If you have samples of clients, if you have you know, clients saying that, that, then maybe question if that's going to work for the kind of client base that you've built up. But don't say that until you've actually taken clients through that. And yeah, fair enough. Out of 10, you might have one client that says, look, I don't want to talk about this. And that there might be specific reasons for that. But in a whole, clients are welcoming to it. So don't, don't decide for the clients would be not my advice on that one. Werner, this has been an amazing conversation. I know our audience is going to be sitting on the other end of uh, you know whatever device they're listening on and they can just pick up on your passion uh, and energy around this whole topic. I mean, I've written a ton of notes here uh, you know, that you've sort of shared and, and thank you for sharing. You know, things like how your business is structured, whether you can be one person that wears three hats or three people that wear one, you know, how you how you um, make the choice sometimes between and that conflicting choice between doing what's easy, which is you know, getting into the initial goal and getting that done or doing what is rich, which is uncovering why and, and trying to connect everything around that. The, the role of, of you as a facilitator and helping clients uncover their own solutions and then delivering strategy to help them get there, tying their strategy to something meaningful so that they're more engaged and empowered to, to go and execute on that, um, upskilling clients and linking that back to their value of wanting to upskill and learn um, learn new things when it comes to investments, um, how you put a premium on client education, how you make a choice to be an accountability partner because it absolutely would, would uh, increase your value of your relationship. But when you're sitting on that powerful information, why wouldn't you? Um, how it gives you elevated trust helps you elevate the, the connection to the human uh, and help, helps elevate best interest, which I know is always a hot topic. And, and lastly, your point around we condition clients and, and we've historically conditioned clients to expect an investment experience. Why not make it conditioning them about something that's important to them, which is their life and their values? You know, there are so many takeouts here, here Werner. It's, I'm going to ask you for one more tip, as we always do with our Lumiant Live uh, um, uh, uh, podcast um, uh, guests, which is if someone was about to deliver a values-based advice experience or, or is thinking about it, what would one tip you would give them be uh, around their advice experience? Okay, I would say that we need to focus on what's in our control. And what's in our control is to guide a client through this process of discovery and getting real meaning 
behind you know what's gonna what's gonna produce a best life. Um, what's in our control is to assist them with the the actions that they can take. The strategy as well, the little nudges. Those things are in our control, absolutely. So I think an advisor thinking about going down down this this route, just think about the fact that you can have the structure, it's all in your control. So the value that you can add to a client's life, and clients are paying us for this, right? So there needs to be value. The value that you can deliver is in your control through this structure. But the, the what's not in your control is if I say I am gonna disregard those conversations, I'm only gonna focus on my clients, only care about the investment returns, and um, you know how, how that pans out. If I am going to, to a large degree, um, link my value to that, the market's not in my control. So suddenly, we're gonna have tough times. We've had some easy times now because you know it's been easy. The markets have done well and, and, uh, 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 and it's, been, it's been easy. But at times, it's gonna be really, really tough if what you've conditioned the client to believe your value add is, and if that's investment management, you could, you, you could sit with a situation where um, a client experiences less value and, and it's not your fault because it was never in our control, the market. So I would say that um, go down the route of linking your value to what is absolutely in your control and you will always add value even in, in tough times. Well, and a, a very sage tip for, for all those listeners out there um, and a great one to end on. I want to say thank you on behalf of all the Lumiant Live listeners for spending uh, your time with us today and infecting us all with your energy and passion around delivering value to your clients through a values-based experience. Mate, it was a superstar effort. Thank you so much. Thanks, Mark. It's been a blast. Thanks, man. Thank you.